Today we're going to start learning Fur Elise by Beethoven. Um, we're going to learn the real version, but I'm going to make it as easy as possible. I'm going to put it in a bunch of short videos so that you can focus on one section at a time. The part we're learning today sounds like this. And it'll re repeat from there and we'll talk about that later. Um, and I've played a little bit fast because I just don't want to waste your time. But um, all right, so if you'll look along, I'm gonna put the sheet music, a graphic of the sheet music above the keyboard. I'm also gonna put a link in the video description of the sheet music that I'm using if you wanna download it, print it and follow along, okay? So the first measure of that little pickup, the first two notes are just an E and a D sharp. Uh, and what I really wanna point out is that the first five notes of the whole song are E and D sharp. So with your pinky, come up here and grab an E. It's to the right of middle C. And with the, I'm going to recommend your three finger grab a D sharp. And you're going to play that, those first five notes are those two notes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. After that, you're going to come down with your thumb and grab a B. So, ba, na, 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 ba. Now you know where this is going. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to have these, th see this shape, your three fingers are going to follow up. And so now you need a D, C, A with your three, two, and your one finger. So if you see these two shapes, one lone dude over here and two over here, and that sort of slides down and you've got one lone dude over here, two over here, that'll help you remember that little pattern. D, I'm sorry, E, D sharp, E, D sharp, E, B, D, C, A, super slow version. <laughs> so practice that one pattern over and over and over until you get it. Until it's really smooth and like sort of second nature, okay? Now, as soon as you hit that A with your right hand, we're now look. if you look along on the sheet music, we're in measure three, and then that's the first note in measure three. And as soon as I hit that, I'm gonna hit an A with my left hand. Okay, so now you'll see the left hand has like three notes, uh, and I think this is ped underneath it. We'll talk about that later. So you've got an A, an E, and another A. Those are the three notes that the left hand plays in measure three. And then the right hand follows up right after it <laughs> by playing a C, an E, and an A. And you notice that I'm playing that A on the top here, over here, with my forefinger, and that leaves my pinky open to hit the next note in the next measure. So it'll probably help for you to play with this uh, fingering, okay? If you're into music theory, you might have noticed that you're basically playing an A minor chord here. Yeah, you're just playing an A minor chord. If that makes sense to you, cool, that'll help you. Otherwise, don't worry about it, okay? So, quick review. We just learned this. All right, now the next measure you're gonna move up with your pinky and play a B here while your right hand jumps down I mean sorry while your left hand jumps down to an E and you're playing octave so you immediately you got a little bit of a tricky part in the left hand E E an octave higher and cross over to a G sharp okay so that the left hand is a little tricky in that part E to an E switch over to a G sharp now your right hand is gonna continue playing an E, like an E major chord, but an E, a G sharp, a, uh, a, a B. And you notice again, I'm playing the B with my forefinger because that leaves the pinky open to get the next note in the next measure, which is C. So let's do a quick review of what we got so far. We've got this A minor chord. And I'm gonna play a B with my pinky while I jump down with my left hand to E's. G sharp, E, G sharp, B. Now when I hit this C in the next measure, okay, now we're looking at measure five, my right, my left hand is gonna jump down and play an A. So we're playing like a similar pattern. So I'm playing that A, E, A again. And this time in my right hand, I'm basically playing E. I'm kind of jumping back into that pattern that you know. And the way I'm doing that is I'm continuing this A, E, A, by playing an E with my thumb and immediately jumping up an octave. And 
you'll notice that the song begins in that E. So once I jump up that octave, it's like I'm starting over. Okay? And you know that part. And notice I played something a little bit different there the second time. So let me just make sure that I'm really crystal clear, get you up to the part we know, and then I'll show you that last little bit and a couple of details. So we've got E, D sharp, E, D sharp, E, B, D, C, A. A minor chord that you're basically playing with your both hands. You can play a B up here, go to E's. Switch over. E, G sharp, B, C, A minor chord that you're outlining. You jump from E to E. Kind of start the pattern over again. Do, 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 do. A minor chord that you're outlining. To B here, and you're going to jump down to E's here. Now instead of playing just, instead of playing that up here, what you're going to do is this. Okay, so what's going on is you're playing E, C, B, A. And when you play that A, you're going to play A, E, and A in your left hand. That's it. So A, E, and A is a common theme for your left hand to play. The one, the five, the one. That's a common thing for your left hand to play for this song. So you'll, you'll see that pattern a lot, which is a good thing. It'll make it a little easier to learn. So you'll see that it repeats right at that part. And that's the, that's the section I'm teaching you right now. The one, uh, so a couple tips that'll help you. You see that it repeats at the end there. What I want you to do is to imagine hearing a fourth note on that last measure, that repeated, that measure right before it repeats. Instead of hearing bum, 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 and then sort of guessing when to come in, imagine that you're playing a fourth note. Like that one, for instance. And then, so it's almost like there's a rest. You can even say rest. Note, 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 rest. Start, start, start. Da, 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 da. Okay, so that by adding that little rest in there, it helps you know when to come in. That's tip number one. Now, tip number two, you'll notice it says pad. I mentioned we were going to come back. Pad, and it's got that flower thing to the, to the right. Every time you see pad in the flower, that means you're going to push down the right pedal, the sustained pedal on your keyboard or your piano, and you'll notice that lets your notes get kind of like airier, that they get a little more um, uh, ambient sound going on. Uh, so you want to you want to clear each measure in this song. You want to clear each time you sort of change chords. So listen to it how it sounds. I'll, I'll try and exaggerate the pedal. No pedal. And pedal here. You hear how that's like full. Now I'm gonna switch here. I'm gonna clear the pedal and put it down right again. You hear that sort of thing, and then you switch again. So every time you're switching like sections or chords, if you think about it like chords, you're gonna be switching your pedal and clearing it. Uh, so try and pay attention to that in the music. Mess around and you do what sounds right. Usually if you just do what sounds right, you kind of get it, which is the cool thing about the pedal. Anyway, that's the first tutorial that we're learning, the first section of the song. I really hope it helped you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for part two coming out soon.